access the best care, uh, we're not able to access the best insurance, and I think that the good news is that's really starting to change. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased to be here, and I, I have to tell you, Mr. Mayor, I have a, a fond um, spot in my heart for this area. Um, uh, my son and daughter-in-law got married in this area two years ago, and the last time I was in Tampa Airport was coming through to the wedding, so it, it made, made me smile arriving here this morning and thinking about that lovely occasion. Um, last week, the President, in his State of the Union message, talked about um, a new um, contract with America and talked about a blueprint for an economy made to last, um, looking at manufacturing and energy, and new skills for American workers as part of what's going to go on right here is, is upgrading and updating skill sets. And then a, a renewal of various kinds of American values. And he talked a lot about people getting a fair shot and having a fair shake and playing by the same set of rules. And I think that that's um, a very important concept, that if you work hard, you can do well. You should be able to raise your family and own a home, put a little away for retirement. And you shouldn't have the fear that all of that could go down the drain if you get sick, uh, that you will be bankrupt or not able to get the care and help you need. Um, so part of the framework of the Affordable Care Act that was passed a couple of years ago is trying to fulfill that promise, a fair deal and a fair shake. Um, I've seen it up close and personal, but you know, we have had a health insurance industry that for too long um, actually got to pick and choose who got health coverage and who did not, particularly for small business owners and for individuals shopping in the market on their own. And that market was particularly hard on women. Um, it was not unusual because of the jobs that women have that women are more likely to be uninsured and more likely to be underinsured, have some coverage but not cover the benefits. Um, it has been legal in every state in this country to charge women up to 50% more for their health coverage, exactly the same coverage that a, a man would, would have um, because of uh, different kinds of health conditions. And health care plans often, again, did not cover um, services needed and wanted by women. Um, and that's beginning to change, and in 2014 that will change entirely. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of the things that have already begun to change. Um, it's no longer legal for our children, if they were born with a pre-existing health condition, to be locked out of the insurance market. Insurance companies can't any longer deny coverage to children. By 2014, they won't be able to deny anyone coverage based on a pre-existing health condition, and that's good news. Um, being a woman will no longer be a pre-existing condition. <laughs> Those days are coming to an end. And that's also very good news. Um, Medicare, the program uh, for seniors and disabled Americans, has a majority of beneficiaries who are women. And as, as you get older, more of those beneficiaries are women. And part of the law really has been bolstering the Medicare program. Today, uh, we announced that the so-called donut hole coverage, the gap in coverage that many seniors experience if they take a lot of prescription drugs, is really being closed, uh, thanks to the Affordable Care Act. And, and just in Florida, um, seniors have already saved about $142 million uh, because of that plan this year. Uh, that's about $600 in real money in their pockets to, to seniors that they can spend here in South Florida, hopefully, um, but not have to worry about not filling prescriptions, not getting the medication they need. Medicare Advantage in Florida, a plan that um, is an alternative to traditional fee-for-service Medicare and often a very popular choice for seniors. We've got some very, very good news. Uh, enrollment for um, 2012 is up about 11%, and premiums here in Florida are down by 
So more people taking advantage of the plan, but they, they have seen their premiums drop. And that's largely because we have the ability now to negotiate and we have the ability to actually reduce the cost of those programs. That means an average beneficiary over the next several years is going to save about $4,200 on health care for seniors. Access to preventive care without cost sharing in Medicare is already in place. So wellness visits and colon cancer screenings and mammograms no longer have to have an out-of-pocket cost. And again, that is going to um, be in place across the board. And we're making some historic investments in healthcare workforce. I know we have uh, a young doctor here on the panel today, but we've been able to triple the number of National Health Service Corps providers throughout the country. And we have 317 of those young doctors uh, here in Florida who essentially exchange service in underserved areas for help paying off student loans and, and debt. And that's a very good bargain um, for a lot in America. So things are really moving in the right direction. Um, uh, we think that the, the rule changes not only will be enormously beneficial to all Americans, but particularly beneficial to women. <coughs>